this quilt is a very special one for me. This is a Shiridu sampler and in today's video I'm going to tell you the story behind the quilt and explain how this quilt kickstarted Shiridu and made me quit my day job. My name is Irene. Welcome to the Shiridu channel, where I share videos with tips and tricks on quilting. If you have any quilting questions, please put them in the comment section below this video so I might use them in a next video. Today it's time for a show and tell about this quilt, the Shiridu sampler. So I made myself a nice cup of tea and uh, I'm going to share with you the story behind this quilt, the Shiridu sampler. When I was little, I learned all kinds of crafting from my mom and my grandmas. And um, I learned uh, embroidery, so cross stitching. I learned uh, sewing. I learned um, making uh, uh, bracelets, knotting bracelets. Uh, every kind of craft you can imagine, I learned from my mom. And. Um, the only thing I didn't learn or didn't want to pick up was quilting. My mom has been a quilter for a very long time, but I was never really interested. I guess I didn't really like the fabrics or not sure what it was, but I didn't want to pick up quilting. Um, but that changed when I got a sewing machine. I got this lovely old sewing machine from uh, my parents' neighbor. And um, when I had that, I thought, now I also need to make something with it. So I went to a fabric market and strolled around looking for fabrics. And there I find, found a lot of um, pretty colorful fabrics. They weren't quilting fabrics, but um, uh, I really liked those. So I took some home and um, uh, started making things with them. So I made my very first uh, little baby quilt with it just to practice on uh, cutting strips and, and starting to sew. And then I started searching for fabrics online and I discovered that in the US there is a ton of modern bright colored uh, happy quilting fabric. Uh, so that kind of made me fall in love with the um, fabric and the chance to um, make something with that and so also with quilting because that's what you do when you want to make something with quilting fabric, right? When my mom's birthday was coming up, I figured that I wanted to make something for her. She has been a quilter for so long, but always made quilts for other people. So I decided that I was going to design something and make that for my mom. And the quilt that I made was this one. And I love making it. I designed all the blocks to be something that both my mom and me uh, loved. So the quilt was also named Made With Love. And there's a sailing boat because we went sailing a lot. And bikes because we I went on a um, bike holiday with my mom. So it was a very special quilt to make. And it was such a wonderful thing to give it to my mom as a complete surprise. Because she had no idea that I was making it. So then when that quilt was done, um, I wanted to turn those um, blocks into patterns. I was already selling patterns for crochet on um, Etsy. Uh, this cheeky monkey over here is uh, Mike the monkey and he was my very first crochet design. So that was the very first pattern that I sold on Etsy. And um, I thought I could also turn those uh, quilt blocks into patterns. So I started remaking the quilt and um, changing the blocks up a little bit because the quilt was pretty personal for me and my mom. So I started also adding extra blocks and um, it turned out into a new quilt, which is now the Sugary Do Sampler. And at the time that I was making those blocks and turning them into patterns, uh, that was also the time that I went to a craft fair for the first time um, as uh, having a booth. I, I visited a craft fair in Zwolle, the Handwerk Beurs, um, quite a few times with my mom as just visitors once a year. But now I decided um, quite spontaneously that I wanted to have a booth there. Uh, I was only working on sugary do in the evenings and weekends only. I was working on it 
a lot in the evenings and weekends. And uh, But I still had a day job as a mechanical engineer in the offshore industry. Um, so I thought about working on Sugar Do a lot, but I worked five days a week, so I only had time in the evenings and on weekends. But one afternoon in uh, the office, I decided that I was going to rent a booth. So I contacted the uh, organization of the craft fair and asked for the smallest possible space that I could rent there. And um, I just decided to go for it. So that was in November and the craft fair in Zwolle is always in uh, February. So I had just a few months to design packaging, um, uh, print my booklets for my crochet patterns, um, make sure that I had some fabrics with me to sell there and uh, I haven't even finished all the blocks. So it was really a kind of crazy idea, but it got me so excited that it uh, I don't know, it had to be the right thing to do at that time. So I started making crochet kits and print business cards and do all the design of my uh, patterns and print them and everything. And I got there. I was ready at February. I had a tiny, tiny table and uh, I could present my makes to the people who visited the craft fair. Setting up my booth there was such a magical thing. Um, it was. It was very special because I always walked around there as a visitor and looking at everything and being so inspired. But now I got to be there and make my booth and walk around there uh, with all the other uh, attendees. And uh, that, that was uh, one special thing in itself. Um, but then, of course, the craft fair started. And the very first morning, my mom and dad dropped by as a surprise and um, they brought my mom's quilt because I was designing the blocks for my new quilt but it wasn't finished yet so my mom had her quilt with her so we put that up in my booth and uh, I just put the blocks that were finished uh, next to it so that I could tell people this is what's going to be uh, uh, next so this is coming up um, and I had something to show like this is a quilt that I made with a lot of those patterns um, yeah, so very personal kind of little space to share my ideas and my creations. And what happened there was really, really special. People were so enthusiastic about what I designed. It, it was kind of crazy. I never got in live feedback on patterns. Um, when you sell on Etsy, uh, people do send you thank yous, but it's not so personal as when someone walks by and they stop and come closer. So that means that they uh, saw something that they liked and then tell you what they see or even buy your patterns. It's really, really special to experience that um, in, in real life. And people were not only buying some patterns they were also so happy that some of them kind of jumped in front of the table and were so happy with what they saw and um, that was it was just amazing it was I think the thing that made it most amazing was that I got to inspire other people to want to create because creating things and making stuff is what makes me the most happy and to be able to inspire others to um, buy a crochet kit and start crocheting at home uh, that, I, that was just so special so that craft fair really really sparked my joy um, for Sugary Do and for doing what I do now uh, but then I still had a job so I guess that craft fair was the big turning point because after that I asked if I could go work part-time but that wasn't possible in that situation so I decided together with my husband that I would quit my job and start doing sugary do full-time and see how I could grow uh, with my business and uh, see what it could bring us yeah so that's um, when I quit my job and started working on Sugary Do full time, I was doing that from home at the moment, um, but it grew bigger and bigger, and um, I had so much 
yarn and fabric laying around that I grew out of the house and then moved into the Shibuya studio, which I showed you in a tour uh, a few weeks ago. Um, uh, so yeah, that's that's the story about how I started Shibuya. Uh, and this quilt, the Shugiru sampler, kind of made that possible because it was um, it was with this quilt that I started my quilting journey. So the crochet I, I did already, but then um, after working out all the patterns from this quilt, uh, it turned out to be so many that I turned it into a book, which is my first quilting book, um, the Shugiru sampler. And uh, it is available in uh, print, in uh, Dutch only, and as you can see, it is a pretty big one. Um, but So yeah, that book was the one that I took with me one year later when I attended that craft fair for the second time. And I also translated it so that it could be available as an ebook in English. So uh, all the patterns in the ebook are uh, available in English. And yeah, I think it's fair to say that that quilt that I made for my mom and uh, the blocks that I turned into, the Shugiru sampler, uh, kind of kick-started my quilting journey within Shugiru and um, made me fall in love with uh, what I do even more because hearing other people's feedback and not the fact that they say I like your design uh, because, well, that's nice, but design is a very personal thing, but uh, that what I do, um, that it really inspired others to start making, that is the best compliment that I can ever get. So when I read in the YouTube comments, uh, I started quilting because of your videos, I'm doing a real, real happy dance because that's so awesome to hear that you are also finding joy in making and doing what you love and making room for the things that you love. So that's the best compliment that I can get on my work, I guess. So that is the story about the why behind the quilt, so how I started it and why I made it, and also how it started should we do, but maybe I can share you now in some more detail uh, the blocks on this quilt. Let me see how we are going to do it. I guess I'll just turn the camera. There we go, and now I can show you a little bit more up close what is in the quilt. So here in the top corner we have two lips and uh, I think those are pretty cute, very Dutch. Uh, so here we have two lips, they were also in my mom's quilt. And here we have uh, little fishes, they still need details after all those years. <laughs> I was supposed to embroider little mouth and eyes on it, but still haven't done it. Um, so yeah, little fishes. And we have a set of apples. And also music notes. Uh, because I played the piano and I played a bugle. And um, my mom sings and I also sing. So uh, music is a really thing that we both love. And here are some sailing boats. We did a lot of sailing in uh, in Scandinavia. It's so lovely to uh, sail in Sweden and Denmark. A little birdie and some cacti. And here we have some spools of thread, of course, for the quilting. Popsicles. Some blocks are also random, like with not really a story behind them, but just because I liked to make those. So here we have the bike from our biking holidays. Also a nice Dutch one. And some flying geese and animals. We had a lot of animals when I was little. Uh, my very first pet was a bunny and my parents had a dog and we always had a cat which kind of moved out when <laughs> when the dog was coming to live with us. And here are the pencils. Maybe this is my favorite um, block of the whole quilt. So it's actually two blocks. So one block with pencils and one block that I just mirrored or flipped, I guess. Mirrored and flipped. But you could really make a nice table runner or something with all pencils. 
or a bag. Would love to make something again with the uh, with this. And here we have some candy and little turtles. And here's the vlog with letters made with love. And here we have some penguins that you probably saw already on my channel. Uh, also a vlog that I really like is this little owly. And some smaller flying geese and butterflies and snails. And then, of course, could not miss on this quill is a sewing machine and another one. And there we have a bird's house, umbrellas, little birdies, and of course mugs for tea or hot chocolate, a little strawberry and two hearts. Ooh, and also a little line of um, bunting. And after I finished the quilt, I also made some um, smaller quilts, mini quilts, with the blocks from the book. Let me show you. There are so many different blocks uh, in the Shukuru sampler that it's lovely to just pick one of those and uh, turn it into a project. Like this, for example. Uh, these are the smaller uh, cacti that are in the quill, but then made them bigger and turned it into a pillow. And making a block bigger, that's also what I did with the owl block, and turned it into this mini quilt. I love doing the um, uh, quilting on this one, by the way. Maybe you can see it better on the back. Those tiny squares. It was a lot of fun to, uh, to quilt this. And then I collected a lot of apples in one quilt. So here a mini quilt with all the apples from the Sugar Do Sampler. And then also a uh, penguin quilt. This one I remade actually. The first time I made this one uh, was for a, um, a mini quilt swap on Instagram and I made this one in rainbow colored uh, penguins. Um, and I liked it a lot but of course it was a swap so I sent it away. Um, so I just had to make it again. So this one I kind of made exactly the same as the one that I sent away uh, because I really liked it. And then here we have one that is also enlarged from the quilt but then also tilted. So this is the little bunny that's in the quilt without the carrot and then I just tilted it and uh, made the kind of what is it? Minimalistic kind of quilt out of it. Very fun to do. Especially the quilting on this one again, I loved. Uh, I kind of love doing repetitive quilting on uh, with straight lines. And um, this one was echoing around the shapes of the bunny and then echoing around um, all the way to the outside of the quilt. Let me see if I can show you. So here, for example, you have the ear and then it's echoing all the way to the outside of the quill. Here you have the other ear. Really nice to uh, to do this stitching. And then one that I made a very long time ago. This is a tulip block that is not in the sugar do sampler, but it was in my mom's quilt. So uh, I had also. Um, two lips in my mom's quilt, but then I uh, changed it up a little bit and ended up with different tulip blocks in the sugar do sampler. But this one was also a fun one to make, and it has um, different kind of low volumes uh, on the background. So uh, those are all um, fabrics by Zenchik uh, from Moda. I really like those. And the final mini that I have here is with the animals. So, um, cute little animal quilt. Those mini quilts are such 
fun projects, small projects to make. And all those blocks are also in the sampler. Um, yeah, so it's a big collection. Now that I'm showing you this and telling and uh, sorry behind the quilt, I'm getting all excited to make something new like this. So I guess I'm going to start sketching and designing and uh, letting ideas come to uh, make another something like this. The bundle of uh, quilt blocks, it's just so fun to make and endless opportunities to uh, to create with it. Oh yeah, what I wanted to show you was the layout of the book. So as I self-published the book, I also got to um, think about the layout and how I wanted to design it. And um, this is what I came up with. Um, so the book is divided in chapters and those chapters are named by size. So this is all in centimeters, but don't be scared if you're uh, quilting in inches. It's super easy to convert. All the measurements in my book are divided, uh, can be divided by two and a half centimeters. So 10 centimeters is four inches because two and a half centimeters is almost one inch. So when you want to use this, you can just convert it and use it as inches. So 10 by 10 would be four by four inches. 12 and a half by 12 and a half would be five by five inches. So it's really easy to work with this also uh, when you're working in inches. So here's also the story about my mom's quilt. And um, so then when you dive into the chapters, you will see that uh, at the beginning of a chapter, you can see which blocks are available in that size. So this is uh, all the blocks of 10 by 10 centimeters. And you get to choose uh, from these. And then when you go to 12 and a half by 12 and a half centimeters, so that's five by five inches, uh, then you get to choose between these blocks. So I scaled the blocks already for you. So as you can see, this little heart is available as four by four inches, five by five inches, and six by six inches, and also tells you the page that it will be on. Um, so that way, when you look at the pattern, uh, where's the heart? There's the heart. So when you look at the pattern, you don't have to scale it up yourself. You can just uh, print it. So that is the way the book works. And uh, in between you will have uh, nice photos of all the blocks. So it is a book, but practically it is just a pattern bundle with loads and loads of foundation paper piecing patterns already skilled for you. So there you have it. That is the Sugar Do Sampler and that is the story why it is so special for me. First of all, because it was based on a quilt that I made for my mom, but second of all, it was the start of the quilting branch of Shuri Do. So um, I'm super happy that I got to make it and that I could turn it into a book and that the ebook is still selling every day today. So I'm super grateful for that and um, pretty excited to start designing a new one. So I was thinking, since this kind of sparked my um, excitement to make another one of those uh, Sugar Do Sampler bundles with lots of foundation paper piecing patterns, I thought maybe I could use your input. So if you're up to it and if you have some block that you would love to see in a quill, um, put it in the comments below this video. And if I'm picking your vlog and if it's going to show up in the next Sugar Do Sampler or however it's going to be called uh, ebook, I'm going to give you a free ebook. I've no clue how we're going to do this practically, but uh, I would love your input. Maybe the book will be finished in about a year or I have no clue how long it's going to take but I'm sure that I'm going to start uh, on sketching and uh, thinking of ideas now that sharing this story got me all excited again. So leave your ideas in the comments and it might show up in one of my new projects. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this wasn't too chaotic 
uh, kind of a video. <laughs> I have no clue how long I've been talking already. Uh, so thank you so much for watching. I really hope to see you again next week where I will be talking about picking fabrics for foundation paper pieces. Okay, bye!